That's a very good <clears throat> The question was if every other union had the same process, endorsement process, as the CWA, would we have more union endorsements? I think the answer is yes. I think what we are seeing is a lot of grassroots support in union after union throughout this country, uh, but that support has not necessarily trickled up to the leadership in some cases. <laughs> but I am proud, and, and one of the indications of this is not just that we have the CWA or the National Nurses Union or the American Postal Workers Union, we also have a lot of locals, dozens of locals who are the grassroots of the trade union movement. I don't, you know, I, I can't tell you exactly, you know, what every member of the AFT or the NEA believes. I, I honestly don't know that. Uh, but I think we have an enormous amount of support at the grassroots level, uh, which uh, is manifesting itself in the support that we're receiving from dozens of locals in New Hampshire and around the country. So the answer is what I would have hoped is that unions who believe in democracy would have done what the CWA is really create a wide open process. Now maybe we'd win, maybe we wouldn't win, I don't know. But I think we would have won a lot more national union support than is currently the case. And by the way, I think we're gonna win more national unions. Yes, yeah. American democracy, in my view, is being undermined by Citizens United. And what Citizens United has done is to say to millionaires and billionaires and large corporations, you can now spend as much money as you want in a super PAC and uh, elect candidates who will represent the wealthy and the powerful. And as you know, I have said I don't want a super PAC. I have not spent one second raising money for a super PAC, and I will never raise money for a super PAC. Now you got a union which is, how old is this union? How many years you've been in existence? 75. You have a union that's 75 years in existence. They've been playing an active role in politics for a long time. They will make a decision as to how they go forward in terms of putting people out on the streets and knocking doors. I support that. This is what grassroots activism is about. And any comparison about working people knocking on doors as opposed to billionaires making a contribution, I think would be a false uh, comparison. Yeah, let me just kind of amplify the last two questions. Uh, one, uh, I'm very proud of the fact that CWA went to its members and asked them who they wanted to endorse for president. And I believe that that's the way it should be done because I think that an endorsement coming from me or our executive board alone would have been an empty endorsement. I think that uh, if you're going to endorse a candidate for the presidency of the United States, that you should do so with your members deciding to vote for that person rather than uh, an empty endorsement coming from me. He could have gotten uh, 22 votes from our executive board, I guess, but uh, this way he may have about 700,000 votes. Um, and. And to answer the other question, CWA uh, will uh, do everything possible, every single thing possible. And we have thousands of activists across this country in primary states and non-primary states and places where, uh, every place in this country. And we will use those folks to contact our members, their families, and other working people to make sure that they understand that this union, and not only this union, but a lot of the middle class and a lot of working people are supporting Senator Sanders for the presidency. And let, me just, let me just add to that. When we talk about a political revolution, when we talk about grassroots democracy, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Citizens United means that a handful of billionaires sit in a room and make millions of dollars in contributions. 
Grassroots democracy means that working people go out and get involved in the political process. And what's happening here is absolutely consistent with my overall campaign. We have received approximately one million individual contributions from Americans in 50 states in this country. No candidate running for president has ever received that kind of support. So what we say always, the other side may end up having more money. That's quite true. But at the end of the day, we're going to have enough money to win, and our money is going to come from working families and from the middle class. Yes, ma'am. I don't think those are empty endorsements, but uh, you know, I think that uh, our endorsement uh, coming from uh, our members is the way uh, it should be, and th that's why I said when we started our poll that the only thing that this union would do is do whatever their members said we should do, and that's what we are doing here today. And you know, other unions do whatever they do, and that's up to them. And uh, I know what uh, our process was, and I'm proud of it. No, I, I agree with what Chris said. I mean, look, uh, I don't know what the results would have been if there was a Democratic poll in all the other unions. I don't know. You don't know. Nobody knows. I think we would have had a pretty good shot to win some of those unions. But I respect very much what the CWA did. And what they said is we're not going to allow just the executive board to make that decision. We're going to do as much as we can to involve people at the grassroots level in the voting process. That's what they did. And we won. We didn't get every vote but we want a good majority. That's the process that I think uh, we should, as a nation, uh, continue to go through. Uh, let's take a question from the phone, please. Thank you. Nicole Guiadano from USA Today. Your line's open. Your question, please. Hi. Thank you very much. Um, how does CWA plan to use its super PAC um, in support of, of Senator Sanders' candidacy? <laughs> a little provocative question, you think? <laughs> <laughs> uh, as I've already said, we will use uh, whatever we need uh, with our own members and with working people across this country to uh, do every single thing we can to get Bernie Sanders elected to the presidency of the United States. So we will use our PAC money. Uh, Bernie doesn't want to take it, which, okay, I, I respect that. And we'll use it to make sure that we uh, do everything we can to get the vote out, to make sure he's the next president. You, Eric Garcia with Will Call. Your line is open. Your question, please. Yes, hello. Uh, thank you very much, Senator. What I'm curious about, um, this, this question is more for, um, uh, for, Chris, uh, for Chris Shelton. Um, when I was talking with people in other, um, in other unions who have endorsed Senator Sanders, one of the things they said was some consistency on the TPP and on the Keystone Pipeline as opposed to Secretary Clinton. Um, but one of the things that I was curious about was, we, uh, did you hear from what members said was one of the reasons why people supported Senator Sanders? And what, did, and what did you hear were the main reasons why people were supporting Senator Sanders over the other Democratic candidates or the other presidential candidates in general? Look, just like uh, Senator Sanders, I have nothing against Hillary Clinton. I know Hillary Clinton for a long time, and I have nothing but respect for her. But our members decided that uh, this was the political and economic time uh, to elect somebody who was not going to do politics as usual, and that person is Bernie Sanders, and our members were clear that uh, they knew uh, uh, Senator Sanders' stance on good jobs, good wages, good retirement, uh, on bad trade deals, and that they thought that he was their best shot at uh, doing what they need to do uh, for the middle class in this country, for working people in this country. They thought that he would be the best champion at this point in time to, uh, for their cause, which is to make sure that the 1% is not getting everything and that the 99% gets their fair share. This is what I think. I mean, it goes without saying that money in a national election is, is very important, no question about it. 
But we shouldn't get confused in terms of who necessarily raises the most money as opposed to whether or not we're raising enough money to win. So I suspect that because Secretary Clinton has a super PAC, and you've got millionaires and billionaires contributing to that, they will end up raising in total more money than we will. But the question is, can we raise enough money to win in Iowa, to win in New Hampshire, and to win around the rest of the country? And the answer is, absolutely, we can. So, I mean, it blows my mind, and I really have to be honest with everybody. Six months ago, seven months ago, if I had told you that I thought that in mid-December we would have a million individuals making two million contributions, I never would have believed that. But what's going on at the grassroots level in this country is working people and the middle class are sick and tired of big money buying elections, and they're willing to participate. But it's not just money. It's not just money. It's what the CWA is talking about today, and that is grassroots activism, which at the end of the day is even more important than money. Give me people who are prepared to knock on doors, talk to their neighbors, talk to their friends. Nothing more important than that. That's a lot more important than a 30-second TV ad. And that's what the CWA brings to the table, and that's why I am so appreciative of their support. Hey, Bernie, you got it. All right. <laughs> you know, we, we can't compete with the Koch brothers or billionaire donors to other campaigns. We cannot compete with that. The labor movement as a whole can't compete with that. But we got something they don't have, feet on the street. And this union will absolutely use those feet on the street. That was a good question. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, I think we are honing a message which is resonating all across this country. And that message is that in this great nation, with an explosion of technology and worker productivity, the great middle class should not be disappearing. And the message is that we, in fact, can change that when we stand together. The policies that I have indicated will create millions of decent paying jobs, will give women a fair shot, will give young people, regardless of their income, the ability to get a higher education, will rebuild our crumbling infrastructure. All of those issues are widely supported by the American people. And as Chris just said, the American people are sick and tired of working longer hours for low wages and seeing almost all of the new income and wealth being created in this country going to the top 1%. That's our message, and that is a message that is going to win this election. Thank you all very much.